board. Let's say we wanted to find what the MPL was, marginal product of labor. So again, marginal, just like with every other place in economics, marginal just means one additional, or the last one, or the next one, either way. So if we wanted to figure out, and usually you can assume that zero workers makes zero output, even if they don't give that to you. So how, here we can see then that the very first worker made 10 trucks, so that's 10. The second one alone made eight because that's how much the output went up by. So you can really say that the formula is change in the quantity divided by change in labor. Now here's one thing. You might look at this and say, hmm, if two workers made 18 trucks, doesn't that mean they each made nine? 18 divided by two. Well, what that's saying is that the average is nine. So there's this new variable also called the average product of labor. That's really just saying, on average, how much did each worker make? And that's, that's really the formula for APL is simply Q over L, not the change. So that you can say that on average here, that is nine. And here for one worker, that's 10. So here then, if we're doing the marginal, the third worker alone made three, because 18 to 21. But here you're just doing the average. Three workers made 21, so 21 divided by three each, on average, made seven. So here's the thing, just because you know the APL, meaning on average, each worker made seven, doesn't tell you how much, what the breakdown was, how much each worker made. And usually what we're gonna uh, observe here is that the more workers you have, each one's gonna contribute less and less. That's called diminishing marginal returns. That usually happens, imagine if you own a restaurant if you hire one chef, they're probably gonna make a lot of food, a lot of dishes, but if you're at the point where in that same one restaurant you're hiring a 14th chef, probably not adding a lot. So that's why the marginal product of labor usually is decreasing. Let's talk about returns to scale. The word scale comes from when you're trying to scale up your business, so increasing your outputs and whatnot. So here's a question. Let's go back to that Ford example. Let's say you know that 10 workers and 10 machines gets you a thousand trucks. Here's a question for you. What if you then double the amount of workers and machines that you have, all of your inputs? So now you have 20 workers instead of just 10 and 20 machines. How many trucks do you think you're gonna have? It's actually, we can't tell. It kind of depends. What if you get exactly 2,000 Trucks, that's kind of what you'd expect, right? If you have twice as much, if 10 and 10 made you 1,000, then you know if the extra workers and the extra machines kind of added the same amount as the previous ones, well then, you're gonna have exactly 2,000, right? But you might not, you might have less than 2,000 or you might even have more than 2,000. If you have less than 2,000 as your output, then that's called decreasing returns to scale. Decreasing returns to scale. Now, if you have, on the other hand, exactly 2,000, that's called constant returns to scale. And finally, if it's more than 2,000, then that's increasing returns to scale. Now, so if we wanted to generalize, it's kind of like saying if you were to double all inputs, and technically you can say triple all the inputs or whatever, uh, if you were to double all inputs, and if you more than double your output, that's increasing returns to scale. If you exactly double it, that's constant, and if you less than double your output, then that's decreasing returns to scale. Now, if you have decreasing returns to scale, that's also gonna have uh, increasing cost. So it's kind of the same thing to say that, you know, my company has decreasing returns to scale, Meaning when I scale up, I double all my inputs, I'm actually gonna, you know, they're sort of not as productive, so I'm gonna less than double my output. That's decreasing returns to scale or increasing cost. Your average cost will go up. Your LRATC, your long run average total cost, in this case is increasing. In this case it's constant, and in this case it's decreasing. So it's kind of like the opposite. Here if your workers are productive, increasing returns to scale, that's gonna be decreasing cost. So here this is decreasing L-R-A-T-C. So that's what returns to scale is.